It is September 21st. I'm just going to let the song play in your head for a second. Okay, September 21st, the night before September 22nd. Frodo and Bilbo's birthday. Did I have a goal to make a video in honor of their birthday and post it by September 22nd? Yes, yes, I did. Did I achieve that goal? No, no, I did not. For many reasons, which we will not get into. However, I'm going to go ahead and make the video anyway. I'm going to make the costume that I was going to make in honor of their birthday. This one that you see for approximately three to five seconds in the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring that is apparently worn by Angelica Baggins. I've wanted to make it ever since I saw it but was terrified at the thought of messing up so I thought I would do a practice run and make Rosie Cotton's party dress. But I was also scared of messing that up so I decided to make a practice practice dress and I chose Rosie Cotton's dress that she wears in The Green Dragon. And I did end up making that one and I think it turned out pretty good especially considering that this was rather early in my sewing adventures. I never did make either Rosie Cotton's party dress or Angelica's dress all because I wanted it to be perfect. And so many years have gone by and I'm figuratively throwing perfect out the window. I'm going to finally make the dress. I'm stalling. I'm very nervous. I just, I just gotta, I've just gotta do it, right? Just gotta jump in. I'm gonna start with the skirt. Yeah, I'm feeling really nervous, but I need to just, I need to do it. And if I ruin it, I ruin it, right? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I'm doing it. After hyping myself up to begin, I dug out the ancient pattern and inspected the pieces. Kind of a sentimental moment here. This was made on butcher paper that my mom bought me when I first started sewing. The original thrifter, she found a giant roll of the stuff at an amazing price and I used it for years. Not four years, but for many years. Anyway, the pattern pieces looked pretty good, but I decided a muslin was in order since I most likely wasn't the same size as I was when I was 15, but first... The skirt. It was to be a simple gathered skirt. I unpicked the seam at the top part of the bedsheet, cut along the stitch imprint line, and made myself a waistband. Then I made a plan of which way to cut the skirt, realized that would result in less gather, so I changed the plan by 90 degrees and set to cut it out, completely forgetting that I switched plans, but remembering just in time. That's wrong. I almost did a very bad thing. I divided the sheet into three sections, making the length of the sheet the width of the skirt for optimal fullness, and that was all I conquered for the evening. September 22nd dawned. Well, actually, it didn't really seem to dawn. It was rainy and dark for about half the day, which is my idea of a beautiful day, honestly. Unfortunately, it was a rough day personally, but at least I had sewing to do while I contemplated the weight of life's problems. I had three sections of skirt to stitch together end to end, which I did using French seams to make them as invisible as possible because lots of swooshing of the skirt while dancing is likely to occur and inside seams will likely be seen. <gasps> And I gathered the approximately seven and a half yard stretch of skirt into the waistband. Then I hand stitched the inside of the waistband into place, added some clasps, and finished it with a basic hem, and the skirt was complete. It was time to tackle the bodice. I upsized the pattern and cut it out of the fabric I was going to use as lining, but for some reason it ended up being way too big, so I trimmed it back down. I did end up modifying the pattern just a little bit, so I documented it and was cutting out the new paper pieces, and I came across this piece, and I was really confused what on earth this piece was. It looks like a bodice front, but this is my bodice front. And then I realized, oh, it's actually trash, because I just cut it out of here, and this is just to be discarded. But it looks like a bodice front, and I actually do like this line here. It looks like it would be a really cool bodice front piece. So I'm keeping this, and I'm going to use that in a bodice someday. I cut the newly modified bodice pieces out of some duck canvas for interlining and also of the orange, which was scary because I didn't have very much of that fabric and there was no chance of acquiring more. Thrifted fabrics are amazing, but can be stressful. I interlined the bodice and lining pieces, and that was all I was able to accomplish that day. The following day did actually dawn bright and sunny. Oh well. I had some errands to run before I could return to sewing, and I did run into the thrift store real quick and grab a few goodies. And I returned a book to the library, but I'm not entirely certain I returned it to the right place. I made it home and inside just in time. On this day, a nice, steady rain, it was not. It was wind, buckets of water, thunder and lightning, and some hail. Oh, and tree limbs. Not my favorite, but the water was much appreciated. Trying my best to focus on the project, I stitched together the bodice and bodice lining pieces, except the center front because that required some special attention first. Then I made some casings for the boning. I 
am now ready to work on the bodice center front. And I was thinking that it was out of the same orange as the rest of the bodice, which is why I cut it out of the orange. But upon closer inspection of the garment, I do believe it is made out of a tan fabric. So I'm probably going to be using a piece of this bed sheet as the center front, and I will save this for another project or as a backup if this idea goes awry, because I could be totally wrong. And maybe it's not a brown color for the center front, but I'm gonna try it. The center front has a design on it, and to me, it appears to be blue. I could also be wrong about that. I have three options. I could use embroidery floss and hand embroider it, which is not enticing to me because I think that would take a very long time. I could use the buttonholing stitch. The other option is to paint it. I really don't like that option either. So this is a literal trilemma that we have here. The other thing I have to do is redraw this because by the time I finish the blue lines, the squares are gonna get a little bit too small. So I need to redraw this with bigger squares. I just thought of another option. I could use bias tape. That could be an option. Not sure about the color. Ooh, I'm liking this one. This might work. I'm gonna try all four options then. All right, testing is complete. By the way, when I said buttonhole stitch, I did mean zigzag stitch. Some machines will allow you to use the buttonhole stitch and sometimes you have to use the zigzag stitch and just adjust the width and the length. And you can get it closer than this. I just couldn't be bothered. So that's the machine stitching. This is the hand embroidered bit, which I know it looks dreadful, but I really wasn't rooting for this one. So I went really fast, was not being careful at all. The paint did not turn out as terrible as I thought it would. I still don't love it. I think the winner is the bias tape. It's not amazing, but I think it looks pretty good. And it is the simplest option, and I am all for that. So here it is. I'm actually okay with how it turned out. For a moment there I was thinking it was looking absolutely terrible, but I think it turned out decent. The only thing I'm not super happy about is I don't think it's quite dark enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and coffee stain it and hope that I don't just absolutely destroy all the work I just put in. I dunked it into some coffee for about an hour and then set it on Blaze's head to dry. While it was drying, I set to work on the blouse. I used the same pattern and method as in my chemise video. I just didn't want to include a tutorial here because I don't want to bore you if you've already seen it. Also, this video would be way too long. Unfortunately, the coffee stain did absolutely nothing except make it look a little bit wrinkled. Oh well. Getting very close to being finished. I have my hair in curlers for hopefully filming the reveal tomorrow. Okay, okay. Uh huh. It is looking a wee bit costumey to me, which I don't love. That might change once it is all finished. Also, get these curlers out. The neon green is not helping. So, what I have left. to attach the lining to the bodice along the top edge and the bottom edge, finish the armholes, finish the back edges, and put in some eyelets. I still have to make a back panel. Also have to put in some boning. Not in that order, but all those steps do have to occur and the bodice will be complete. Yes. Actually, the whole costume will be complete after that, except I was thinking I wanted to make like a little petticoat to go underneath the skirt. I'm not sure that I will, 
but I might. Still trying to decide. Good morning. The hair turned out actually decent. I am surprised, especially because last time I did it, it, it was not so good. I'm glad too, because I slept in those and that was really uncomfortable. So I think it was worth it. Here's where we are at. I have just a few adjustments to make on the bodice. Finish these off. Finish this off, put in the back panel, add some eyelets, lace her up. She is ready to go. I still have to decide if I'm going to do a little underskirt or not. It would essentially be the same exact thing, just a gathered skirt. When she's dancing, you can kind of see that she has a light colored underskirt underneath. So I kind of wanted to do that. I'm going to finish the bodice first and then I'll decide if I want to do that. Do you want to see my point of view of sewing right now? Yeah, I am understitching the top part of the bodice, which is really difficult because for some reason, I completely forgot to do it before I closed up the bottom part. I should have done the top, understitched the top, and then closed up the bottom part. But did I do that? No. So here I am. So I just remembered that uh, this part comes off of the machine, so now I can go through the armhole and it's so much easier. Making a back panel is very much like making a pillow cover. Cut out two rectangles, sew the pieces together, leaving an opening big enough to turn it all inside out, remembering to cut the corners, and then turn it inside out. Give it a good press, and sew the opening closed. A wee bit of lacing, and it is ready. I didn't end up making the underskirt petticoat sort of thing because I didn't have enough time, but I think I will later. I think that would give it a little bit more body, a little bit more floof, make it that much better for dancing in. I am really glad I finally made this dress. Is it perfect? No, not at all. There are a lot of flaws, a lot of things I wish I could have done differently, but I wouldn't have known that unless I actually made the dress. If there is anything you take away from this video, I hope it's what I learned and am still learning. And that is don't put off doing something because you are waiting to get it absolutely perfect. If that's the thing that's holding you back, know this, nothing will ever be perfect. It's okay, even a good thing to do some practice projects, warm-ups, muslin mock-ups, to be better prepared. But please don't forbid yourself from doing a project until you can get it absolutely perfect because there is no such thing. It is a good thing to aim in the direction of perfection in order to improve, but 
If you never actually begin, you can't improve. The point is to make something beautiful and learn from it and improve as you go. And if it's clothing, you get to enjoy wearing it because this thing is so freaking fun to wear. I just want to bounce and dance and frolic. And I want to make so many more of these in so many different colors. Hobbit autumn, here we come. And spring. Basically, I'm just gonna be making a bunch of these and wearing them whenever I feel like it. <laughs>